It's a helmet with night vision, yeah, you see? Mm -hmm. This is Harshman. He's the head of an NGO that supplies gear to Ukrainian soldiers. Come Back Alive has been around since 2014, when the Russian-Ukrainian war first started, and the organization has raised money through crowdfunding over the years. But something's different this time around. They've been paying for things with cryptocurrencies. Donations to Come Back Alive have gone through the roof since the start of the war. Of the $75 million raised so far, around $10 million has been in crypto. This chart shows the amount of crypto that's been donated to Ukraine in the first two weeks of the war. It started coming in almost immediately after the conflict began, before the earliest foreign aid was announced. More and more people are opening their digital wallets to donate, whether it's to charities or social causes. But this is the first time that a national government, in wartime, has asked for crypto donations on the internet and the response has been bigger than expected. We were expecting maybe like $10 million or um, like similar amount, but we just gathered around 20 million in less than two days. That number is up to $110 million as of the beginning of April, and it's going to the Ukrainian government as well as groups like Come Back Alive. And even though it's a fraction of the total money flowing into the country, crypto donations have gotten a lot of attention, praised for its ability to cross borders quickly and without friction. But there are risks with donating crypto too. The currency's value is extremely volatile, and the lack of regulation has invited thousands of scammers and has raised fears that Russians could use it to avoid sanctions. It's so buzzy right now. If it's lending that buzz to good causes, there's some tangential benefit from that. But I don't think it outweighs all the problems that I see with crypto. So how much of an impact is crypto really making in Ukraine? Twenty fourth of February, I woke up at um, five a.m. because I heard really loud noises. This is Michael Chobanian testifying in front of a U.S. Senate committee last month. Like millions of Ukrainians, he's in hiding. This is pretty much all I have left: a few sweaters, a sneakers, and jeans. Hours after Russian missiles started hitting Ukraine, Chobanian set up a wallet address to receive donations on behalf of his company, Kuna Exchange, the largest crypto exchange in the country. That same day, Ukraine's Minister of Digital Transformation asked him to help the government do the same. This wasn't completely out of the blue. In recent years, the Ukrainian government has put a lot of effort into making the country more digital friendly to encourage economic growth. Invest in Ukraine. And crypto was a part of that equation. The country had one of the world's highest crypto adoption rates in 2021. So when the war broke out... We didn't have to spend that much time describing what is crypto and how to use it and why you have to use it. That meant someone like Alyona Shevchenko could start organizing a crypto fundraiser as soon as the conflict began. All I care about is that Ukraine um, wins and that I get to see my family again. Shevchenko is Ukrainian based in London. She and a few others on the internet, all of whom didn't know each other in real life, quickly formed a group called Ukraine DAO. The community has just organized itself on the day of the invasion. A big chunk of the money raised came through the auction of this NFT, which are one-of-a-kind digital assets often linked to an image or artwork. And OnlyFans, a subscription platform, donated about $1.6 million worth of crypto. The money wasn't just raised quickly, it was transferred to Ukraine quickly. For example, a transaction using Ether, a cryptocurrency, can be made in less than 20 seconds, when the average bank transfer could take several hours or even days. Four of days, people will be without food, without helmets, without uh, uh, bulletproof vests, uh, without first aid kits, without the uh, blood uh, stopping uh, wound patches, and so on and so on. So for us, time is vital, and crypto here is the best alternative to anything. Their partner NGO, Come Back Alive, spent most of the donations from Ukraine DAO directly on supplies without having to convert it into fiat, which is another word for government-backed currencies like the dollar or euro. There's like a very real tangible thing you can look at on the, the Block Explorer, where you see, okay, my one Bitcoin donation went to their wallet here. That very nature of the transparency makes you feel more connected to the impact that you're, that you're helping them deliver. Alex Wilson is the co-founder of The Giving Block, a company that helps charities fundraise through crypto. 
The transparency he's talking about here refers to technology that crypto runs on called the blockchain, which lets you follow the path of a crypto transfer for the rest of its life. But that transparency has its limits. First, it only works as long as your donation stays on the blockchain. When crypto gets converted to fiat, and that's the case with most of the crypto flowing into Ukraine, the trail goes dark. We don't actually have um, our eyes on when they're converting those funds, if they have it all yet, and what they're doing after they convert the funds. You are kind of restricted to the same intelligence that you would have been before, which is what they report. And in cases like Come Back Alive, where crypto is being used to buy things that Ukrainians need, it's still really hard to keep track of that. Transparency means nothing if you can't understand it. So you can have all the information in the world, hundreds of pages of complex you know, stuff written out, and if you add into crypto sort of the fact that you often need to understand certain aspects of computer code in addition to anything that's being disclosed, for the average person, that may be impenetrable. This is Hillary J. Allen. She's a professor of law at American University who studies financial stability regulation. She says a lack of understanding of how to track crypto transactions can leave people open to scams, even in a war. Any emergency offers, unfortunately, the opportunity to take advantage of people. So that, that, I'm not saying that that's unique to crypto by any way, shape or form. But the volume of scams in the cryptoverse seems to exceed what we see in, in normal fiat currency um, environment. The internet security firm Siren revealed that at its peak, there were about 100,000 phishing emails per day asking for crypto donations for Ukraine. I even got one myself recently, signed by the name Volunteer Organization. It's, it's way more than we ever seen. Usually with these campaigns, we would maybe see uh, in thousands. It doesn't stop there. There's been a huge spike in Ukraine-related web domains being registered. A lot of them are asking for donations and most list Bitcoin and Ether addresses rather than bank details for sending money. The, the front page might look very legitimate, but if you check other pages within that site, you see it's just random generated content. There's been limited success so far with scams, but in the crypto market, there aren't many safeguards against fraud. If you make a crypto payment and realize something's wrong, there's little you can do about it. Transactions are almost never reversed. Make sure that you're doing it on the nonprofit's website or our website or listed party where you can verify the funds are really gonna go where they say they're gonna go. As of the end of March, crypto donations make up only about 13% of total donations to the Ukrainian government, a small portion compared to bank transfers and payment cards. And it's an even smaller fraction of what Ukraine needs right now. They recently asked the G7 for $50 billion to cover their deficit over the next six months. But Ukraine is betting on crypto as part of its future. Last month, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky signed into law a bill that legalized and regulated cryptocurrencies in the country. And for governments, organizations, and movements looking to funding their causes, crypto has become another option, one that generates an outsized level of attention compared to things like war bonds or fundraising platforms. And because of that, it might be reaching people who wouldn't be donating otherwise. Crypto crowdfunding is being driven by a younger, digitally fluent demographic compared to most donors who are over 55 years old in the US. The, the enthusiasm for crypto has perhaps encouraged or shaken loose some donations to the Ukraine that might not otherwise have been made because people want to show that crypto has this use case. This is what? My parents' wedding. Oh. And for people like Shevchenko, watching a conflict unfold from afar, crypto fundraising and its underlying technology has become a hands-on way to be involved. If you're Ukrainian, you have this guilt. You feel like you should be there. But the, there are different front lines where we are needed. And so I understand that I am a lot more helpful in London and I can do a lot more for Ukraine. God, I hope I see them again. Hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos like this one and check out some of our other recent work here.